Politics is a game of addition. You try to leave bridges intact, especially in your own party, so it's all hands on deck in the general election. That said, Nikki Haley and Donald Trump continue to attack one another, even though the race is seemingly close to being over. How does that help Republicans win this fall? Although you might not know it from the way some Republicans conduct themselves, there is no rule against winning both the Electoral College and the popular vote. There, there's nothing that says you can't do both. And the last Republican to do both was George W. Bush. His deputy chief of staff, Carl Rove, joins us now. Welcome, Carl. It is good to see you again. President Trump has, has been the GOP nominee, I guess, soon to be three times, so he understands politics a lot better than I do. But how does it help win over female voters in the fall to refer to a successful female governor and someone you yourself picked for your administration as bird brain and talk about what kind of dress or clothing she might have on? How does that help in November? Oh, well, it doesn't. And, and look, it's mystifying to me, too, because, look, Donald Trump is the front runner. He is the, he is the person who is best positioned to unify the party. So when, uh, you know, when he lost, uh, excuse me, when he won Iowa, he, he had a great remarks. You know, I'm conciliatory, I'm humbled. But then he goes to, to New Hampshire and wins a big margin. And rather than saying, I'm humbled by the vote of New Hampshire and it's Republicans are coming together, I respect the tough campaign that my opponent has been running, I hope that we will soon end this contest, I look forward to being the party's nominee. Instead, he goes on a, you know, a 19 minute rant about her. And that, that it makes him look weak, first of all. But second of all, it does not help unite the party. Last time around, he lost 8 percent of Republicans who either voted for a third party candidate or for Joe Biden. And as a result, Donald Trump trailed in the popular vote by 7 million votes and lost three critical battleground states by a combined total of about 44,000 votes. So being the front runner gives you a chance to be big and to be conciliatory and to be unifying and positive and upbeat. He missed that opportunity in New Hampshire. Let's see if he, he can be uh, better after South Carolina, assuming he wins there, as all the polls tend to indicate he will. Yeah, I mean, I, I always thought, like, winners tell joke and losers say deal. I mean, winners ought to be happy. Uh, he's mentioned yeah. South Carolina. I know technically, technically, there's still a path to victory for Governor Haley, I guess, from a number standpoint. But realistically, if she loses her home state, it, is it over? Or, or, or is there somehow Super Tuesday is going to have a miraculous reversal for her? Well, something would have to happen between South Carolina and Super Tuesday for that to happen, that, that something big and dramatic that would affect the fortunes of Donald Trump. Uh, it's axiomatic in politics that you got to do well in your own home state. The path to victory is littered uh, with uh, defeated candidates who were defeated because they they lost their home state. One of the, you know, I, I love the history of it. I mean, 1940, Wendell Wilkie, who's who's. Uh, to challenging Tom Dewey, the, the, the crime-fighting uh, prosecutor from Manhattan, uh, takes enough delegates in New, Ham in New York to embarrass uh, Tom Dewey on his home, on his home turf. So this, this kind of thing happens, and, uh, and when it does, it, 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 hurts the, uh, it, it hurts the chances of, of somebody who can't hold their home state. All right, let me ask you this before I let you go. One wide lane of attack on Biden is physical or mental fitness for office. But Nikki Haley is using the same argument against Donald Trump. So uh, will voters remember that if he is the nominee or, or is the argument going to stick with Biden but not stick with Trump? Well, it, it's a problem for both men, but it's a bigger problem for Joe Biden. About uh, over, uh, better than three out of every four Americans think that he is too old. Uh, about, about one out of every two think that Donald Trump is too old. It's going to be an issue in the general election for both men. Need, you know, it, it, it's interesting to me. It, 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 these two guys are the, maybe the only two guys who can, who can lose to each other. But on the issue of age and stamina, it's Biden who's got a bigger problem than, than Donald Trump does. But Donald Trump still has a significant number of people, who, one out of two Americans, say too old to be president. Carl Rove, I'd have you on every week, but I can't afford you. So I will take you when I can get you. I, Thank you for joining I, us on I'm a free, Sunday night. I'm free, Gowdy. <laughs> I'm free, Gowdy. You, somebody else is picking up the tab for you. <laughs>
All right. You good. Then I'll have you on next week. Thanks for joining us Sunday Thanks. night. We'll see you, you soon. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.